wondering how well do you actually observe lightning or how, actually, how well you observe anything around you. I'm pretty sure you've seen it before, but do you know what color lightning actually is? So put your answers in the comments and we'll, we'll talk about them a bit later. Um, but first, let's talk about whether or not we can make lightning here. I wouldn't be bringing another experiment on the screen if I wouldn't be able to make some lightning. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to try to mimic how lightning in the sky, um, well, outside, also happens. Basically, what we would have is we would have a very charged cloud and the ground that is either not so charged or would have opposite charge. Um, so here we want to make one of these balls, if you can see it, so one of these balls uh, is going to be a cloud and the other one is going to be the ground. So it's going to be a mini, mini uh, lightning. Okay, so now I see that we already have some answers. Um, one said blue, white. We have another one that says purple and another one that says blue in the air. That's a very specific um, answer. And let's see exactly what we can um, observe in this experiment. So I'm going to start rolling this around. We're going to start brushing these brushes against the circle. Oh, have you seen it? Huh? Exactly. So we have here bluish, blue-white kind of lightning. And exactly as Pavel um, just wrote in the comments, the color of lightning actually depends on where the lightning is happening. So this was just one example of lightning and we're gonna use this device in a couple of seconds again. I just want to show you that really the color can depend because if I take this tiny thing, this is a plasma ball and what we get here is again, we put a lot of charge in the center and we want to, well, the charge wants to get out. Um, and if we turn this on, ah, if I found it, good, we can see quite a different color there's some blue, um, very strong blue in the center, and then we have some pink in the end. So we can see that lightning uh, can also be of a different color. Why is it a different color here than it was in the previous experiment? Well, the previous experiment, the lightning went through air, uh, just as uh, Lucy wrote before. And if we look at it in this um, ball, here inside, we don't have regular air, we have some specific gas um, that will make this be in a different color. But this was just a fun fact. Let's go back to moving. So in moving, what we do is we, we have a charge on, in one space. Uh, in moving with charge, what we do is we have charge in one space and then the charge gets um, someplace else. This is a principle that we are using at CERN all the time. So CERN is the biggest particle physics um, laboratory in the world. And what we're doing here is we're taking a charged particle and we're accelerating it so much that it reaches almost the speed of light. So it's really, really, really fast. If you want to know how fast that is, at the end, when it gets to, well, basically just three meters per second less than the speed of light, um, that particle has the energy of a flying mosquito. Well, I know that's not really that impressive. A flying mosquito typically doesn't have a lot of energy, but if you put all of that energy in a tiny, 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 tiny particle, then this energy actually means quite a lot. But let's see actually how we get these particles to accelerate so fast. So we're going to use this device again. This uh, device, um, just so you know, is called a Wimshurst machine. Uh, so we're going to use this device to accelerate not really a particle, but let's accelerate a ball. So what I have here, a long rail, and this rail has uh, some copper strips here and there. And these copper strips are going to be connected to my Wimshurst machine. So one side is going to be connected to one side of the machine and the other side is going to be connected to the other side. This will technically mean uh, that 
each of these lines is going to have the opposite charge. So one is going to be negative, the next one is going to be positive. Then we're going to have one negative and one positive and one negative and one positive, etc., etc., etc. Okay, um, then what is going to happen? We're going to have this tiny ball. Ah, this is the camera. So this ball is colored with a specific color, and this specific color is actually a conducting a conductive paint. Uh, because of this color, uh, this ball actually gets charged the same way as the strip on which it's on. So if this strip uh, gets charged negatively, the ball is going to get negatively charged as well. A negatively charged ball doesn't really want to stay in a negatively charged um, place. So it's going to want to go to the positive charge. So, for example, if this is the negative, it's going to want to go to the positive. And then it's going to get charged positively again. And let's see, let's see exactly how this rolls out in an experiment. Okay, I'm going to start by turning the Wimshurst machine again, this time without any sparks, hopefully. And let's see what's going to happen with the ball. Ah, the ball got stuck. Let's see what happens with the ball. If I just slightly move it, yeah. Can you see it? It's going, it's going, it's going, it's going, it's going. And it's going to go in the other direction again. And it's going in the other direction. And I can continue doing that as much as I can. But at one point, this experiment just stops being so interesting. But what you can see is really the ball got accelerated uh, because of the charges on the different spots. In order for me not to get electrocuted, I will discharge this whole thing. And you will see, as soon as I stopped this, as soon as I discharged a machine, the ball stopped. So we need this electricity, we need this electric field in order to get the ball moving. And the same thing we need if we want to get a particle moving. So if we want to get a proton moving, we need an electrical field. But the thing is, um, if we want to get a particle moving very, very, very fast, at some point um, we run out of space because we would need a very long strip like this for the particle to go faster and faster and faster to be accelerated more and more. And then we, yeah, we don't even know where we would fit that. So they kind of came up with a very good idea. What if we would do the same experiment but in a circle. And this is where my salad bowl comes um, along. So let me just unhook this thing. We're going to take our proton, move this linear thing away, and bring closer a salad bowl. So this salad bowl is made in a very similar way. We have these copper strips, and these copper strips uh, basically uh, we charge one um, positively and one negatively. And then because these two meet in, meet in the middle, uh, this one again is going to be positive. And these here, you can see on the side, they're also connected. Um, so these will all get negative. So positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And it's going to go around and around and around. And let's see if we can get this ball moving in a circle as well. Okay, I hope you're ready. Let's go. Three, two, one. Ah, starts. Ah. Let's see. Ah. Just like this, it's going to be better. Go to the strip. Yeah. Now we have it. More charge, more charge, more charge. 